So now let's get started with how to teach a speaking lesson. Well, a speaking lesson, if you're interested in teaching a speaking lesson, I think you would have to follow these steps. Step number one is the lead-in or the warm-up. Actually, we're going to, just to um, illustrate every step in detail. All right? So number one, the lead-in or the warm-up. For that, we have a lot of activities that we're going to talk about later on after we just illustrate and give a hint about each and every item here. All right? So number one, you have to warm your students up so that you can break the ice between yourself and your students and between among the students as well. All right? Also, to get them familiar with the topic as if you're indirectly telling them what is today's topic about. Number two is the exposure. Actually, um, um, you don't have to bother yourself with all these details because it is already there in every vocabulary book. But we need to understand what exactly we are doing. All right? So number two is the exposure. And exposure means that you give your students a text, a certain text. If you're giving them a speaking or a vocabulary lesson, they need to, to have a look at a certain text. But before this text, you have to give them the task that you need them to do, all right? So first, tell them, I want you to have a look at this passage and find blah, 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 all right? Or answer the specific or certain question, all right? Then you show them this part, this piece of paper or your paragraph or your whatever you're giving them and tell them and make sure that they understand your instructions very well. Do I need you to write? Do I need you to speak? Do, do I need you to discuss a specific thing? Okay? And then after you expose your students to the language and they answer whatever questions you gave, comes the clarification and the highlight process. Clarification and the highlight process is the process where you have to stop, zoom in the language that you want them to practice. And actually for this, you need to teach them the vocabulary that they need to learn in order to start speaking and the functional language. And functional language here means what, um, what grammar lesson, what grammar lesson they are going to use in order to put these vocab, or put this vocabulary in or put the new words in the context, the a prop, in the proper context, so that they can uh, speak out about a certain topic or the topic that you want them to speak about. Finally comes the practice. Now you gave them the tools, you gave them the vocabulary that they are going to use. To use. You made sure that they really understand it. All right, and this needs you to have many procedures. For teaching vocabulary, we need to learn so many things. But the most important thing is that we have a few steps that we need to learn. Please do not teach vocabulary without following these very same, these very uh, steps, which are M, P, F. I always remind myself by saying Mohammed plays football. M for Mohammed, P for, this is a secret. All right, M here means teach the meaning first. Because imagine that you're giving your student a specific passage and you ask them to try to figure out um, a certain um, meaning or to try to understand this passage. What they really care about is not the pronunciation, for example. Yeah? They, they would definitely care first about understanding the meaning of the word first. All right? So make sure you teach the meaning first, then the pronunciation of the word, how to pronounce it, then drill it in order to make sure that your stu students can, um, uh, can pronounce it properly. And finally, the form. And here comes the writing process. What does this mean? That I don't have to write the words on the board before I start teaching, before I teach, or for teaching vocabulary. Don't I have to do that? Because most of the teachers do the following. They just um, say, hi, salam, good morning, everyone. And then they start writing down the words. 
and the new vocab the, whatever new vocabulary they are going to uh, teach, the definition. And now, let's learn these words. Come on, guys, repeat after me. This is not the right process to teach vocabulary. First, you need to give them the meaning without writing anything on the board. Meaning, how to pronounce. Before you write, these two steps come before you write. And then, showing the form means that you write down the word, let the, let the students understand how to, how to uh, write and read it at the same time. So, for example, the word dragon. All right? If I write the word dragon on the board, I have to teach them. All right? Let me write it down here. Here is the third stage. All right? So I have to tell them that the word dragon is a noun, the part of speech noun. Then I write down the definition. Dragon. Dragon. Where is the stress? The stress is here. And I tell them that the stress is here. So dragon. Repeat after me. Dragon. And finally, I tell them that we have a specific pronunciation, a specific phoneme that I have to stop at. This is not dragon. This is not dragon because, again, this is another common mistake for Arabic uh, speakers. This is a dragon. So this is a d, j sound. Dragon. All right? This is a dragon. All right. So here I follow the three steps while delivering my vocabulary. After that, I am sure that my students already have the tools to express themselves because they already have the vocabulary that will be used. Also, I need to teach them the functional language. What do I mean by functional language? If you're talking, for example, about... Um, um, let's talk about... Okay, firefighters, all right, and jobs. But if you're talking about firefighters in specific, and we have the word match... All right? Match. So, for the meaning, I don't have to tell them match is blah, blah, blah. And I give them the definition. No, please don't do that. All what you need to do is to try to elicit the meaning from your students. Ask them what do, what do you think the word match means. All right? Also, in the case that you ask your students to try to guess what's the meaning of the word match and you realize that none of your students understand this meaning. Put it in, you, do, you would definitely put it in a context, right? We use, um, um, a lady were used to use a match or a lady was using a match to turn on her cook, for example, all right? Or to set fire. 